official. The next president of the United States will be Harry S. Truman. Mr. O'Brien, 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 This is Channel 3, KRTV, Great Falls. That was a scene just after 10 a.m. this morning when demolition experts blew up the Anaconda Copper Company stack in Great Falls. But before the dust had settled, some problems had developed. The stubborn 74-year-old stack just didn't want to die. But seven hours later, with 600 pounds of explosives, the remaining wall of the stack dropped to the ground. Wasn't enough, there wasn't enough integrity in the mass to pull it over. Okay, if the bands had been on it, it probably would have pulled it over. Okay, but if you remember, if you, if you haven't been up there, right at those two points were the worst two cracks. They extended the whole height, and you saw the minute it, the button was touched, it completely dropped and sheared from those, sheared from those points. So it couldn't, it couldn't pull. It just, it just sheared it off right there. Was it a misfire or just no, something? No, you didn't? no, no, no. I think it's a misfire at all. We loaded the back, and uh, the way you would do a standard smokestack. It's just that it, as I said before, it sheared through there, and when it sheared, there wasn't enough mass and integrity of the stack to pull it over. As you know, it took two separate detonations to bring down the famous landmark, and it had people wondering if the landmark was all that weak after all. But hindsight is a wonderful thing, and only one, and one can only speculate now about its quote structural integrity. Whether you felt it should come down or not is an opinion entitled to everyone, but the overwhelming response MTN News got today was that of the spectators was that the landmark will definitely be missed. So I'm pretty sad because I can see it right from my school playground, and I didn't notice that until about Wednesday. And then I looked at it and I started crying right there on the playground. Hey, Willow? Well, I hated the thought of it going too. It has to go, but they can't leave it like that. That looks like a cavity in somebody's tooth. It reminds me of an old person. <laughs> it doesn't want to give up. It wants to stay there too. And it should have been left here, but I think they blew the grade out of Great Falls when they let the stock go. Sad. Yes. I still feel that if they'd have just left it alone, it would have withstood the town of Great Falls. Proved one fact that the stack was stronger than they thought it was. I hate to see it. Remember, ever since I've been a little girl. Well, it was me coming down. <laughs> yeah. Right? Are you sad that it's down now? No. Oh. It was, it was exciting coming down. I grew up in this town, and I've been looking at that stack ever since I was a little kid. I discovered yesterday that stack was only two years older than I am. I'm dating myself now. They couldn't tear it down. <laughs> no, the stack is too tough. It's still half standing. That's a beautiful stack. Maybe they'll leave that as our monument. It's disgraceful now. I hope they tear it down right away. And that they did at 512 tonight. They did re uh, level the rest of the stack. Some interesting facts about the detonation were released by Jim Reddick, the contractor who headed the demolition. A total of 1,000 pounds of plastic explosives were used in bringing down the stack, uh, 600 pounds for the first demolition, and a hefty 400 pounds of explosives were used in the second and final blast. 
right, Red Ike said that they loaded the daylights out of the, the second time around. He said at a press conference following the demolition that using 400 pounds for the blast was, quote, definitely an overkill, but I wasn't messing around. News 5 presents the Nightly Report. Good evening. Thousands of spectators lined up at vantage points all around the city to watch a great part of Twin Falls history pass from the scene today. News 5's Rick Street has the story. There she stands, majestically silhouetted against a blue Montana sky. A landmark in the Great Falls area for almost 74 years now, the Anaconda Smokestack. A welcome sight to many a weary traveler who's known he was close to home when he spotted that stack on the way into Great Falls, but the Anaconda Smokestack will be no more. In less time than we've spent talking already, the smokestack will bite the dust. One minute, it will be there. The next minute, it will be gone. Oops, it's a stack, still standing, at least part of it. Not quite in all her glory, but fighting till the very end. Here's what the first blast looked like. Long before all the dust had settled, it was evident that something had gone wrong. The stack, or at least what looked a lot like the old anaconda stack, was still erect, defiantly standing as if to say, I won't die this easily. What went wrong? Why didn't it fall after the first blast? President of the demolition company contracted to fell the structure, Jim Redock explains. If you remember, we had talked about the possibility that the thing would, uh, that, that would shear at the cracks and telescope. <clears throat> And in fact, that's what it did. Um, when you shoot a conventional stack or shoot a stack in this, this way, uh, you count on somewhat the integrity of the stack to pull it over. If you remember looking at the cracks, they did not go all the way to the top. They were basically in the center. And I believe that's the reason that it dropped and as it sheared up through the through halfway or through the top, it pulled, it pulled the top with it. Um, and just didn't allow there wasn't enough integrity in that mass to pull the back piece over. The crowds gathered to watch the demolition of the stack were estimated at around 30,000. Just about everybody and their dog turned out to see her fall. Some enterprising people even made a buck or two off the event. Some were not pleased and spoke their piece. Others laughed when the part of the stack stood, yet others wept when it finally fell. But it does seem a little strange to view a naked skyline of the Electric City. Something I suppose time will help us get used to. Rick Street, News 5. One man who has been deeply involved in trying to save the stack is Greg Keskes, who started the Save Our Stack Committee. News 5 talked with Keskes this evening and asked him what he thought when he saw part of the stack was still standing. Well, it confirmed a few of the things which we've been trying to tell and get across that same thing what Mr. Omar Schultz uh, said when he was here that even without the bands the stack would have stood at least 30 years without even touching it 
And that just confirmed the fact is that that stack wasn't going to follow the tomorrow or day after tomorrow. That stack isn't a, a what they call it, a cement made stack like they do nowadays, you know, like the one which was shown on TV blown up. This one is made by man. Indra, the bricks were in the locking. You know, it's a, it's a tough, very tough built stack. And it would have stood a long time. They wouldn't have to put in money. We never asked for tax money the first place. But somehow it never, there was too many pros and cons. And I think that uh, the leadership in Great Falls dropped the ball. And I, I do say it. And it was evident today that they dropped the ball. I feel that the leadership was not fully truthful to the public. And I feel that uh, there is something else. And uh, a lot of people really starting now to question why it had to go so fast. Is there something being hid? Do they want to bury what's being hid with the stack? At approximately 5.15 this evening, the last of the Anaconda smokestack hit the ground. And what was the reaction of those who were watching? Well, I don't know. It went. <laughs> How about you? Sorry to see it go. Uh, it's not spread in a hug for it. I thought it could make a good landmark for about 50 years if it was just left alone and the steel bands left on. I think it would have been a good uh, mark for the city. I don't like it. I put 25 years in out there and I don't like it at all. Sad. Looks different over there, of course. Well, I've watched it, I guess, for uh, just about 60 years. We're going to kind of miss it. Well, there were a lot of historical things in Great Falls that have gone down like the Mint Bar and the Falls Hotel. This is quite historic, really. We kind of miss seeing it out there, you know? I think it's sickening. It's really sad. I think it just looks like a blank little hill with nothing on it. Oh, you want to say something? <laughs> Fairy tale come true ends today. We'll have that story when News 5 continues. That is our report of the news to this hour. We will be back tonight following the Green Bay Giants ball game. Until then, 
You have a good evening. Watch Channel 5 at 10 for the nightly report.